Humankind is changing and it's changing for the better. Now it's no secret to the wider community that humankind disappointed a lot of people and the updates that have come so far haven't done much to alleviate matters. The game is better, but it's sitting at a 67% positive review score on Steam with 55% of recent reviews being positive. Now I could go on and on about how that seven out of 10 people liking your product isn't really mixed reviews, but we're not going to debate the philosophy of how data is represented on Steam. That's an argument for another day. No, the reason I bring up the review scores because I think the upcoming Bolivar update is going to be a turning point in my personal satisfaction with the game and that could reflect in the wider community sentiment as well. There are huge quality of life changes coming with some of the most cited issues with the game getting pretty big updates. Now I've been holding off on covering Humankind for a while for a few reasons. Time honestly being the biggest one of them. But this update has me excited to want to cover it because we're finally getting natural wonders with unique effects and the pesky AI won't be sallying out of sieges to attack you every single time anymore. Shout out to Jumbo Pixel, by the way. I've been using his videos to keep up with the humankind updates and you should too, although I do plan on covering humankind more going forward. The flagship change coming in the Bolivar update for me, however, is the fact that you'll no longer be forced to end a war when your enemy's war support reaches zero. I found myself often winning wars too quickly, if you could believe it, and not being able to actually capture the city that I really wanted to take. But soon, for a price, you can continue to press a war on for a few more turns, even when your enemy is defeated and ready to surrender. While we don't know what the price for continuing a war beyond its natural surrender point is, it's likely that there will be some kind of stability and war support penalty across your empire for doing so. Which is why I'm so happy that the stability tooltip yields will also be getting an update in the Bolivar update. No longer will you have to break out a calculator and calculate just how much surplus stability you have. It'll be right there in the tooltip. This is going to take a lot of the guesswork and frustration out of managing your stability and it couldn't be more welcome for me. Back on the war side of things, there are going to be even more changes, however, and war support is finally getting some much needed changes. When the Bolivar update drops, the amount that war support changes after a battle will be dependent upon the losses that both sides take. You could theoretically win a Pyrrhic victory against another player and actually lose war support compared to them. That's right, you could win a battle and lose war support. This change alone makes the system much more dynamic and interesting to me compared to just losing a flat amount of war support regardless of whether it was a single scout that died or 200 units. Other changes to war support include ransacking enemy districts, eroding their war support and having territory under your control under the influence of an enemy's culture will erode your war support. And you know, I'm just so happy to see both forced surrender and war support get some changes. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't that forced surrender was annoying and that war support depletion was annoying. It was that the combination of them both made for just such a much more frustrating experience than any of them individually. I would have been happy with either of these changes to war support or forced surrender. Getting both changes is just amazing to me. The next change though is a real game changer. You all know just how much I love my natural wonders in Civ 6 and finally humankind's natural wonders are getting a mechanics overhaul. I personally found it kind of boring that all natural wonders did exactly the same thing so I'm super happy to tell you that now every natural wonder in the game will have its own unique bonuses. The only one we've seen so far is the Great Blue Hole, which gives you extra science from researchers as well as a flat boost to your science, but I'm really looking forward to these changes. The natural wonders in humankind are genuinely gorgeous to look at, so finally having a reason to care about having them inside my empire is something I'm looking forward to. The AI on higher difficulties and just in general were was was 
were was probably my second biggest issue with humankind and the bolivar update is promising some significant changes in that department no longer will the ai sally out and steal your momentum every time you put them under a siege and this is honestly the biggest change here for me because i spent a lot of time attacking the ai so i encountered the frustrating ai siege counterattack all the time when i was playing now i'll actually be able to fight proper city battles finally the other huge change coming to the ai on higher difficulties is, is that they're easing off on the ai's aggressiveness in the early game and also boosting their bonuses in the late game humankind had the same problem that civ and most 4x games have which is that if you survive the early game you were either already dead or or you could basically wipe the floor with the AI. It was kind of feast or famine. Hopefully with these changes, we'll see the AI's performance look a little bit more sensible and the game will be more fun to play. Now, when it comes to quality of life, there is a host of extra updates like the stability tooltip I talked about earlier. One of the decisions I found myself being frustrated with was picking which infrastructure I should build and how much value am I going to get from that infrastructure. Yeah, sure, I could sit there and count the number of forests in my city that I'm currently exploiting in order to calculate how much extra production I'll get from getting a lumber mill, but nobody has time for that. But that's not going to be an issue anymore because with the Bolivar update, infrastructures will show you exactly how many resources they'll produce for you. And honestly, this is a bit of a game changer from a quality of life standpoint. You could end the patch here and I'd be happy. But yes, dear viewer, there is more. A lot of players don't really enjoy playing with pollution. And personally, the way it works was a little bit jarring. It kind of suddenly appears in the late game and it crushes your stability and yields. And if you're like me, you'll be happy to hear you no longer have to deal with this because you have the option to turn off pollution penalties when you're starting a game so go forth my loyal minions carpet the world in, in industrial zones and do so without the fear of getting hit by those stability and food problems that would hit you from pollution another small update that is coming as well is you'll be able to update the models of your administrative centers to the most recent era in this update and this is kind of like a nice little cute update personally i kind of like having like neolithic and medieval city centers surrounded by modern buildings so i won't get much use out of this feature but every quality of blah, 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 but every quality of life update shows they're listening and working to improve the game god you actually have no idea how easy it is to fumble over yourself when you're trying to talk about a thing uh, also uh going forward is is at mods at basically previously when you were playing humankind if you like picked a couple of mods you downloaded them and you loaded them up if you crashed or restarted the game you the mods would deactivate and now that's not going to be the case now they're going to activate when you start the game up if you had them activated previously this is a really nice change although i'm not actually sure this is going to impact a lot of people because i think a lot of people don't actually know that humankind has mods and they don't know how to install mods maybe it'd be a good idea for me to make a video on how to do that but this next change is big for me and it's finally we're going to be told just how to unlock civics in humankind i cannot tell you how nice it is that we're going to be able to actually see what you need to trigger a particular particular law or civic in my opinion it was it, it felt really really random so this is going to be a pretty big deal. It would be incredible if it kind of showed you which conditions you've already met and how close you are to hitting, like to actually unlocking the Civic. But like, you know, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth here, okay? Because when I was playing, like, I don't know about you guys, but me personally, when I was playing, unlocking Civics just felt random. It felt really random. They would just show up at random points. And I was like, I know I did something to cause this, but I have no idea what that thing is because I did like 12 things last turn. So actually getting to know what I need to do, what things I need to target in order to unlock them, is quite nice as far as I'm concerned. I can kind of see the appeal of having a hidden system in that the game is kind of hiding things from you and you're kind of supposed to play by feel. I, I just prefer to have the information so that I can make decisions that make sense rather than kind of being at the whim of accidentally making the right choice. I, I'm just, I, I really like, I like RNG in games, but I like also certainty. And I don't think that I don't think that that feel too RNG and they felt too RNG even though they're not RNG at all. So this this change is just genuinely 
A plus positive change. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be so happy to know what actually triggers civics. And you know what? Speaking of triggers, one of the biggest complaints people have with humankind was the distribution or lack thereof of strategic and luxury resources. Thankfully, you can put away the pitchforks because strategic resources have mostly been fixed and we're getting new options on how luxury resources will be distributed on the map. You'll be able to choose from three options. Spread, putting those luxuries all over the map. Natural, which kind of, I think, gently clusters them in like small areas. And then clusters, which like heavily clumps them together. Personally, I kind of like my luxuries to be spread out most of the time, but I can kind of occasionally see myself wanting to play with a natural or even heavily clustered clustered playstyle because especially with the clustered look it looks like you could get some really really cool commercial quarters the last announced change is that the game is getting support for turkish and italian no doubt this isn't very important for me but if you're turkish or italian this will be really nice for you to be able to play the game in your mother language but this does bring us to the most important question here what is the impression of this patch what's the sentiment and feeling we walk away when we read these previews personally I walk away with a renewed faith in the game's potential and the capability of the developers to achieve that potential. While that faith has been shaken slightly due to the slow initial pace of post-launch support, the consistency of that post-launch support has given me renewed confidence in Amplitude. Let me know what you guys think though. How is Humankind in your opinion? Is this patch going to be enough for you to give the game another chance? Or if you're already still playing it, is this enough to keep your interest in the game going. Drop a comment on the video and let me hear about it. Now, if you're wondering, okay, Potato, we get it. It's a good patch. When is it coming? Okay, well, thankfully, the developers have given us a rough date, mid-June. So it's not too far off, only a few weeks and we'll have it in our hands. And if you're paying attention to their news feeds, the developers did say you might be able to get a chance to play the patch early. So do keep an eye out for that. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the Humankind Bolivar update, at least until it's here. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.